Painting a realistic bird doesn't mean that you need 300 colors to be able to do that. In this video, I'm going to show you that you only need nine colors to create a realistic painting. Let's have a look. When I choose a reference image to paint, I first look at the subject that I enjoy. So in my case, I'm an animal lover. So I enjoy painting animals and birds and sort of live creatures. And then I look at the colors that are in the image and I tend to gravitate to the colors that I actually really, really like and enjoy working with. So in my case, it's really bright teals and aquas and um, greens, oranges, sort of like happy bright colors. I find it so much easier to work on the painting that contains various elements that I really enjoy working with, so things like colors and how cute an image looks and whether it contains subjects that I really really enjoy working with, um, like certain animals like cats or um, certain really bright birds. And that gives me motivated to keep working on it and inspires me to give it a go. And when I get to a certain stage in the painting that I feel like I might be struggling, it helps me keep going and work through it. So believe it or not, in this painting, I did struggle a little bit halfway through where I got to that really ugly stage and I wasn't sure whether I wanted to start over and uh, throw this one out or whether I should keep going. And I basically thought that I should keep going and see where I can take this painting. And I really liked the end result. So let's have a look at what I actually needed for this painting. So first thing is the paper and I used a rough um, textured sort of a paper, watercolor paper for this. And for the paint, I've used Winsor & Newton Cotman range in tubes. These are student grade paints, but they, they are still really bright and vivid and pigmented. So for this exercise, um, student grade paint worked really well for me. My first step in this painting was to identify all of the colors that I would need. And to do that, I decided to work in my journal first. There I drew up a rough sketch, very rough, loose sketch of the bird. And I've mixed up the colors. I wrote down the names of the colors just to see how it would all look together, how it looks as a composition, how the colors blend and whether I like the overall, overall look of it. And once I identified all of these colors and I was happy with the color mixes that I have put down and noted on my uh, paper in the journal, then I did a sketch on the proper watercolor paper and that made my job a lot easier and quicker and less stressful because I already knew all of the things that I was going to do. It was all planned and all I had to do is start painting. For this painting, I've used specifically a female cardinal reference image as opposed to a male. Males contain a lot of red in the coloring of the feathers and I'm personally not a fan of using a lot of red in my paintings. That's why I picked the female cardinal and I enjoyed working with more yellows and green mixes in the feathers as opposed to just making the whole thing look red. So as I go through the process step by step, I will explain to you the colors that I've used and the colors that I've mixed and how I mix them as I get to that stage. So now let's have a look at the actual process, how I've painted this female cardinal. I'm starting off with just putting some clean water on different sections of the paper, the different sections that I'm going to work on. I'm not wetting the whole thing, just small section at a time because I don't want the paper to dry before I get to the, the next section. And if it dries, it will give me really hard edges or blooms, which I didn't want. And that's why I was working in sections, section by section, adding my colors that I wanted. And and then moving on to the next stage with the same process. Starting off with a bit of lemon yellow as a bit of a background and just adding some darker color mixes to the areas where I can see some shadows. So in some cases I've added a little bit of yellow ochre to it and in some cases I used a bit of burnt umber just to make it a tiny little bit darker. For the gray areas, I've used more of Payne's gray 
and where I can see a little bit of purple and red, I've started adding a bit of uh, crimson, alizarin crimson, and um, mixing it with Payne's Grey just to darken it up and make it look a little bit more purple. Once I finished with that section, I was working on the beak and the same process. I just wetted the area so that it blends in nicely. I've added a layer of yellow, then I've added some orange on top of it and started adding a bit of a red to, to the top section, sort of around the edges where I can see it's a little bit darker and just a tiny bit of gray and purple in there just to darken up certain sections. And remember, this is just a first layer. So even though I want to identify the lighter areas and the shadows, I still don't worry about too much detail and I don't worry about making it as dark and bright as it needs to be because there will be more layers on top of it later anyway. Then we are moving on to the main body of the bird and same process, adding some yellow, then a little bit of orange and a bit of yellow ochre to the darker spots. I'm straight away identifying the darker sections and leaving out the lighter areas. Lighter areas we will be darkening up a bit, a bit later on anyway, but we're trying to create the sections to make it easier for us to identify the different sections, different clusters of feathers and the shadows. On the right hand side of the bird, I have left a lot of the area where it's highlighted by the sun unpainted or with just a very light layer of yellow and a tiny tiny bit of green where I could see it. Next I'm moving on to the tail which contains a variation of reds and purples and a little bit of grey. So for the tail, um, as you can see at the beginning of the video, the list of colors, I'm going to use pretty much all of them. I'm going to use cadmium red deep as well as cadmium red hue. So basically, um, if you don't have the same colors, what you're looking for is a bright red. You're looking for a red which is more on the orange side or you can add a little bit of yellow to it. I just found that I liked to use the one that was already pre-mixed uh, in the tube because it was much brighter than the mixes that I could mix up together myself from the colors that I have. So as I go through it, I have a bit of a layer on the tail. Then I'm going to just lift some of the color in the areas which are going to be highlighted. And there's the sections that are lit up by the sun and are sort of reflecting. So you can see a lighter strip there in a couple of spots. And then I'm just painting those variations of the reds where I can see them and adding the shadows with the deeper purples and grays. Once we're finished with that layer on the tail, we are moving on to the wings. Now the wings are a little bit tricky because there are a lot of layers of feathers and there is a variation in color as well. So there is your purples and reds as well as oranges. So it is beneficial to take a little bit of time here and identify the feathers. Now you don't need to paint in every single thing. You can sort of identify two or three main feathers and give an indication of the ones underneath them. But you do need to make them look right. You do need to have the colors and the lighter sections and the shadows in the right places. Otherwise, your feathers won't look right. They won't look like they are uh, folded over, over like the, the bottom layers that they're sitting on top of each other. Once my first initial layer was done on all of the bird, I'm moving on to adding some details and textures. So even though in my initial layer I was adding some texture in there because it does help to have initial layers with a bit of texture as well, it one helps hide any mistakes so that you don't feel pressure to make it look completely smooth and without any like color spots so that if you add your texture straight away it adds to the texture of the feathers and the shape of the bird straight away and you don't need to worry too much about being 100% neat at this stage. 
And then in your subsequent layers, you can start adding more detail and more layers with textures and that just builds on from the previous layers and makes it look more and more realistic with more and more detail that you add. It is important here to understand that you can make your painting look as realistic as possible um, and it can take you many, many hours. It can take you 10, 20 hours to try and paint in every detail that you see in the reference image, but you don't have to. You don't have to see, you don't have to paint everything that you see. In this painting, I chose to not paint in every single detail. I selected a few things that I thought were important, especially things like beak and the eye, sort of detail around the face. I always like to paint in those details in the face because that's what sort of draws the viewer's attention. And the rest of the body can either be even completely blurred out and in a loose style painting, or you can still add detail like I did in this case, but I didn't paint in every single feather with every little brush stroke. I just did them selectively in a few areas. And when you look at it overall, your eye sort of fills in the rest of the areas and the whole thing looks like it's got texture. I'm adding the texture with the short brush strokes and very small brush. So it's important to use a small brush for this because it doesn't hold a lot of paint and a lot of water and that helps you control your brush strokes. So for really small areas, thin brush strokes or the areas where you want to have a lot of control, you want to use brushes with either shorter bristles or skinnier bristles so that you don't um, add too much water accidentally to the paper and then it starts spreading out into the areas where you didn't want to. I'm straight away adding brush strokes with different colors. In the areas towards the top right, I can see more highlighted area. So it's more of yellows and browns. So things like yellow ochre, lemon yellow, a bit of orange, going in and mixing them all together and adding different brush strokes with different colors to create interest. On the left side of the bird, I could see more muted greens. And those colors I've mixed by using either lemon yellow and paints gray or yellow ochre and paints gray, depending on the tone that I wanted. So mixing paints gray with yellow will give us more of a green color because paints gray contains a bit of blue in it. So the more Paints gray I added, the more on the gray blue side the color mix was and the more yellow I added, the more towards green it was looking. So those colors I've added in different intensity throughout the left side as well as towards the bottom of the bird where it's sort of leading towards the tail. I can see a lot of shadows in those areas, especially under the right wing where it's the darkest, probably the darkest area in the whole painting and towards the the edge sort of where the tail starts where the yellow feathers are folding over each other and leading towards the tail that's another really dark section with the shadows and that's where I've added that color mix as I'm working throughout the painting and adding different details and intensifying my shadows it becomes more apparent in the other sections of the painting where I need to make adjustments as well and at this point it's a bit of a juggling act as you go and intensify some shadows on one side, you realize that on the other side, those shadows need to be adjusted. As you identify and adjust those shadows, then it becomes more apparent that say in the face of the bird or in the tail, those shadows need to be adjusted as well. So you go backwards and forwards, adding detail, adding shadows, intensifying the shadows, referring back to the reference image and seeing where you can see the differences and the discrepancies and then make those adjustments. Then once you think that your painting or the paint subject in the painting is finished, what I did in this case is I moved on to the tree branch. You can, of course, do multiple layers at the same time. So you can do like your first wash of the main body of the bird and the like the first wash of the tree as well. But I did it last because I wasn't going to spend a lot of time with the detail 
on the tree, I wanted to uh, make it a little bit simpler so that it doesn't stand out as much and all of your focus goes on the bird. In saying that, there are still a few important things you do need to do with your tree. One, you need to create texture on it by just doing a few simple rough brush strokes, uh, sort of creating like that bark texture. It's also helpful to do it with a dry brush because it skips over some of the uh, raised areas of your textured paper and it even gives it more realistic look. And then you need to make sure that you also have shadowed and highlighted areas of the tree as well because it's affected by the same light source from the same direction. So you need to make sure that you do it right and you add the colors in the areas where it's more shadowed. And in this case, it's more of a blue color where the tree sort of turns away from the light source. And also I've added a little bit of yellow there as well because it's kind of, it was reflecting from the bird or from the light source. It was looking more yellow closer to the area where the bird was. Other than that, I didn't spend too much time on the tree. Like I said, I wanted to focus more on the bird and adding some few last minute sort of final touches just adding a little bit more texture washing like doing like a bit of a glaze over some of the sections where i thought it needed to be more orangey or more sort of warmer yellow tone and that's going to be it for our painting thanks for watching and if you enjoyed it click like and subscribe for more videos if you want to keep watching i will leave you with a playlist of some more paintings that i've done and i will see you there